That's a 10. Ooh, 10's uh, pretty good. Halfway there. Ooh, a 19. 15. I got it. I'm, heat, I'm warming up the plastic. <laughs> I put mine in the microwave. <laughs> you know, what I when, when I'm playing face-to-face with people, I'm always very surprised at the amount of, like, shaking of the dice like this that I see. And it looks kind of lewd, you know? <laughs> oh, I don't ever <laughs> do that. I'm a palm up, like, kind of shake it in the open palm. So that's like a cupping yeah. motion you're making. Yeah, cup the balls. You know what I do? I just, I just put the damn thing. Just fucking chuck it. I just drop it in the. <gasps> that was a natural twenty. I'm gonna do that now, Mike. You're fucked. It's just the drop. That's the move. Like, is there a rule you have to shake it a certain amount of time? It depends on the surface of the table too. Because like I have a really hard desk, so just dropping it makes it spin a lot. But if you're on a soft, you gotta cushion that a little bit before it comes down on the desk. Mine, mine's all about the wrist action and the wind up. Well, let's see. Let's see your technique. Two, one, three, four. Natural twenty. <laughs> I want. Can you get like a miniature craps table? Oh sure. That's what I'm saying. I, think, I feel like that's what I need. Like just to chuck the. Just you can just you can buy those uh, baby rails for tables. We can just fucking bring those with the St. Louis and just fucking whip them into the end of the table. Yeah, we got our trip coming up. We're gonna go all see each other. We're going to St. Louis together to uh spend time together yep got to confirm that you guys are still real people uh it's been two whole years that's right yeah i mean i've never met donnie so he could still just be ai <laughs> yeah. donnie's ai <laughs> donnie answered a want ad for a casting couch <laughs> and, uh, oh casting he, couch. Uh, whoa <laughs> this is your first time <laughs> not quite how i remember it <laughs> <laughs> so donnie we're actually going to record ourselves playing a role-playing game why do i have to take my shirt off to play a role-playing game <laughs> and that's just it sir you don't so just put it back on <laughs> explain the hernia not. check mike explain <laughs> the hernia check. no one here is named harvey <laughs> why am i calling you stepbrother <laughs> it was one of the weirder days for us that's true but we've got wonderful plans we're gonna see a baseball game play donnie's gonna donnie's gonna run a society module for us excited it's gonna about be that. good time yeah i've never, I've, uh, I've never played a druid before <laughs> it's uh, oh yeah yeah we gotta get the uh, gotta get you guys's character sheets together and they're all in the chat put into no 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 put into uh path builder and we'll connect it up in gm mode how do we do that I'll, I'll, I'll walk you through it it'll be fun just you know trying on uh trying a different character for uh, for a little yeah. bit and uh just you know stretch your wings and well, I don't play that much. Right, yeah. I read a lot I get I read a lot of stack blocks. I don't get to build a lot of characters, so maybe a little. No, I I I feel pretty pretty good about what's gonna happen next in this adventure, you know. I I kinda I kinda like that you guys went to the lizard place, you know. Yeah. I kinda liked how that went. The lizard island situation really has three or four pathways that it can take. You know, if you go and you talk to the the lizard folk guards on the Palisades and you don't make a good impression on them, they they might tell you to leave. Just go. Leave us. If you just make a successful impression on them, they might go and get King Veskit and bring him to the front to talk to you. And then you can get another shot with him. You may get to be able to kind of walk around the island, you know, during the day, you know. Hmm. You've made peace with them. You're seeing them and visiting. Maybe you even wander then into the spirit hut, but it's a lot harder. But as I recall, Sirio pulls out a, a 22 on the diplomacy check for the make an impression. And so the book says, look, if you can crit an impression, make an impression on there. One of the guards says, hey, actually, we've got a problem here. Could you help us? And that's what happened. Now, I was as surprised as anyone when I read that the uh, guard that confides in you is named Neela Trand. I thought, what a coincidence, because Bashk's last name was Trand. Huh. Huh. Yeah, that's really a con- coincidence. Yeah. It's mm, kind of amazing. I had no clue. <laughs> For me, though, I just thought, boy, isn't that sort of um, interesting, if maybe Bashk's got, like, some family here. You know, because yeah. you know, they're list folk, right? You know, they, so, is that Who weird knows? to say that they're all related? I mean, no. I don't know. I don't think they're all related, but there's at least a decent chance that they're related. There can't be a ton of Aruxi in the Stolen Lands. I mean, really. No. No. 
So I thought, wouldn't that be interesting if uh, if Bash had a cousin in the lizard folk community whose last name is Neela Trand and then heard about a city called Fort Trand and said to herself, well, shit, that's my last name. Right. Maybe I've got a connection to this party. I can't imagine there's a ton of lizard folk running around that has a last name that's derived from another sci-fi universe's <laughs> homeworld for another type of lizard. So... Probably not, but... Can you tell us where the name... Because you explained it once to us. I've I've forgotten. Yeah, so... Where does the the name Trand come from? Yeah, so in Star Wars in uh, Empire, the... Hail Disney. What's that? (laughs) Yeah, Hail Hail Disney, Disney. exactly. So I'm I'm scared to tell the story because we might just... They might just... But no, there's a bounty hunter there, and his name is... It's a... I think he's... It's Bosk. It's B-O-S-S apostrophe K. We are by no means reenacting Disney products. No, we right are now. not. This is not. No, we are not. We're just referencing it as a fictional story. Yes. His full name is Bas Kwasak Kardask. Um, oh. Yeah. But it's so it's B-O-S-S-K. Um, and he is a uh, trend. <laughs> Sounds like a town in Wisconsin. Uh, yeah, exactly. Right. <laughs> He's a Trandoshan bounty hunter. So the... His homeworld is Trandasha, which is T R A N D O S H A. So okay. I just took the first part of his homeworld as his last name. So it's like it's kind of you derived it from that. Huh. Yeah, and, yeah. And is Bashk a similar character to the Star Wars character? Well, here let me show or you. Was it just kind of a name you liked? Both, both. It you can you can move on though. You'll see it later. Well, I was uh, you know the whole time I, you know from the middle of the episode when you dropped the name accidentally. I was trying to figure out what the relation it was, and I completely f- forgot that, uh, like, it couldn't be. Well, I figured it, like, I don't know if like, it was gonna be, like sister, cousin, you know, mother, whatever. And then I realized, I remembered that Bash doesn't have any parents anymore. And, like, so when she said, like, she's gonna go get her mom, I was like, oh, definitely not a sister anymore. Right. Valid. Right. right. Well, right. Yeah, yeah. sure. She's gonna go That's get her valid. parents. Yeah. Well, obviously, she's not, yeah, Bash's sibling. Or is she? Ooh. Could, I mean, well, you never I mean, know. Like the way the king gets around. Could be. She's out there slinging D. <laughs> <laughs> well, as King Veskit descends down into his mud hut with his three wives to, you know, think, the lizard folk begin dispersing into other uh, huts and things like that. And you're kind of left here in this clearing a little bit. You overhear a couple of things, a couple of comments from the various uh, citizens here. And it's, it's kind of split down the middle. Some people are just like, you know, very distraught, very unsure how to move forward after this, but others are clearly relieved. And the story comes out, you know, again, from bits and pieces that you hear, but this, this will-o'-wisp that you defeated, well, what happened is this will-o'-wisp would accompany Veskett and his hunting parties out into the wilderness and would feed on the fear of the victims of these attacks. Because that's what will-o'-wisps do. They're all about that, right? And so this this will-o'-wisp was like, kind of had a posse almost and was like, you know, eating his fill every day or, you know, once a month or however long. And so that was kind of the situation. You got the feeling that maybe the will-o'-wisp would feed on Veskit from time to time too, you know, freak him out, scare him, rile up his anxiety, you know, in the dark, in the middle of the night, in this little mud hut, eat his fill of King Veskit's fear and then send him off on his way. So this was horrible, you know, and you've got to, you've to, you have to imagine sort of the relief maybe that, that the king here might be feeling as well, that this has been dispensed with. Well, so was the wisp like forcing him or encouraging him to eat other sentient people or yeah. like, how does that like, is it, oh, well, you were bothered by a willow wisp. So you're all, all is forgiven, you know, all the gnomes and shit that you've eaten. It's a valid point. Right. So you're, you're wondering. I'm sorry, so are you saying that, you know, there needs to be some kind of um, consequences for this community for this? I don't know if we have the authority to do that, but, like, do we want to leave somebody that's got the taste of sentient beings? Like, I don't know, like, did he enjoy that? Like, did he learn to, like... Well, I, I, I mean, keep in mind, this is not just killing a random lizard folk. This is killing the king of the lizard, this lizard folk right, tribe, right. so it may mean, like, war, right? Like, Well, we have we happen to have a king with us that we could just put in his place <laughs> sure uh, i mean <laughs> coup, coup de tot sure but i mean I, I just think there's repercussions we can't just take him out because he did something we don't like well what about like i'll say he has killed other people from other areas in these woods aren't they going to be a little bit pissed off about it yeah i mean i i think we and i don't want to like dabble too much with their society but like what if we push them for like a change in leadership like this guy is not fit to lead you anymore like he's chowing down on gnomes and other 
sentient. Brad's over here. I like Brad's CIA plot <laughs> mind right now. We're going to put Strand in charge. I mean, didn't he kind of like yeah. say, like, follow her like she's been leading and follow her while I go and consult my wives? Uh, just that she's in charge of the watch okay. for the night. Yeah. I mean, I think we, we either... Let's ask her. Like, ask her what she thinks about it. Like, is this a, a forgivable offense or is this something that they want to oust him? And, and not only in this in this tribe, but like the surrounding right. areas. Because I'm sure it's gotten out that, you know, hey, yeah. the Vesk King is munching down on anybody who goes around his the island. Yeah, I mean, you heard about this from right. Keston Garris, who heard about it from his contacts in Bravoy. Yeah. So there's some rumors going around that this this community of lizard folk are acting really not good. You find Neela, who you now know to be Neela Trand, uh, on one of the palisades overlooking the east bank of the river. And she stands with her trident and she just stands resolute watching the water flow by. Who has the best diplomacy? Uh, it's definitely not me. 100%. I think it's probably the king. Mine's pretty high. Mine's zero. I'd, I'd say that we ask Sirio to go talk to her about the general feeling of the tribe on the crimes that the king has committed. Yeah. That's a good way of putting it. So, Neela, um, the king's in there deliberating, I guess, with his wives slash advisors, maybe they're wh- whatever they're doing. I, I'm curious about one thing, though. Was the king just by himself eating these humanoids that you guys caught in the woods, or was this a, like a tribe-wide thing? His hunting party and him generally. So is this uh, like hunters from the village, or is it more of like his top advisors? I, I'm not sure how your society's structured. They're the one and the same. The best hunters would be promoted under him and would go off with him, he and the spirit. And kind of what was the rest of the feeling of the of the tribe like? Uh, is it uh, kind of his his word is law? Or was there any opposition to any of his uh, recent behavior? Well, King Veskett's the strongest here. He could have killed anyone, including me, who spoke out against this. We all fell in line. We had to. Most probably didn't like what was happening. There's no reason to do it. It was needless. Others accepted it because they were safe. They didn't care why or how it was done. Just that they knew they were safe and going to be taken care of. So you guys value strength uh, to ensure safety. Um, so there's a couple different kinds of strength. There's like singular strength, which the king obviously has, but there's also strength in numbers. If uh, your numbers were augmented and maybe if we helped out, um, would you be able to stand up against the king? She will not utter an answer to this in the open because what you're asking her is, you know, are you going to betray your king? So she just kind of... Is there a universal hand signal she could give? It was very quiet. <laughs> she gives the universal hand signal of, yeah, maybe. <laughs> it's different from the staircase, the spiral staircase. But yeah, she's very. She becomes very cautious at this. So I have a question: If the Willow Wisp was controlling the king and he was eating people or whatever, the other guys just did it because the king did it. They didn't. Yeah, that's they got in line, and I, I guess I'm not getting the sense that the Will O' Wisp was contr- like mind controlling him. I think it was like just kind of forcing him and encouraging him. Right? It was like a, hey, come and do yeah. this. It's fun. Yeah, right. Bullying him. You know, the the Will O' Wisp had this disguise, right? This image, and the the image was this matched up with the murals in that mud hut, and the murals in the mud hut depicted this old lizard folk hero. hero that King Veskett is related to a few generations back. And so the will o posed as Veskett's ancestor and advised him of like, this is how your society needs to run. Strength, aggression, unity, you know, and Veskett ate it all up. So it's basically an extreme Galarian example of the guy that calls you and tells you he's from the Windows IT desk and he, he needs to help you fix his computer. So right. our, our the, got the best, he got, he got grifted. Yeah. So um, it's unfortunate. He bought but. all the iTunes gift cards. <laughs> yeah. He exactly, bought a bunch yeah. of iTunes gift cards. Yeah, we search his room. It's like, what do you have all these gift cards for? <laughs> he went to the bank. <laughs> the teller was like, sir, are you <laughs> sure you want to send $75,000? I have to. Okay. Do not well, question sir, me. I am the king. He's an African prince. <laughs> it's your money. Should we call your kids? Do you want us to call anyone to come and talk to you about this? How do you stop the king from getting scammed? Yeah. And King Veskett said, no, I've been banking <laughs> here for years. Do as I do as I say. Send the money. <laughs> oh, that's great. I mean, if we feel like, if we feel like... If we can't list demands that says this has to stop immediately or you're all removed, um, if, if it's past that point and we got to, I mean, make a change like this is close to our borders, right? I would imagine that if this practice doesn't cease, you would have 
a war doctrine yeah. on them yeah. to say, to force them to stop yeah. killing and consuming innocent people needlessly. I would think that that is absolutely, you know, first course of business <laughs> with, uh, <laughs> with King Veskett. You know, I mean, you know, my read on it just as an outside observer is that there's some mitigating factors here. Something supernatural happened to him, right. caused him, you know, he can point to this as blame, you know, he didn't take up arms against another community. It was just transient. It was travelers, not to say that their lives are worth anything less, but you understand right. what I'm saying. Like these were not countrymen. These were, yeah. these were just victims. But yes, I, I think it'd be totally reasonable for you to insist that this community stop this practice. And perhaps it already has, given that the yeah. spirit has been defeated. And Vesket, you know, it, it was shown in front of everybody that he, you know, is a fool, mm -hmm. basically. That kind of, so maybe it all kind of know, gave into the problem will solve itself. Maybe they'll depose him on their own, you know, now that he's shown to be, you know, making poor, poor decisions. Possibly. And that might be kind of what Neela eventually will tell you through a series of hand signals. <laughs> is that, Can I write that know, on my sheet under languages? A Ruxy Ruxy hand signal. sign language. A Ruxy Ruxy sign Ruxy language. Signals, yeah. And then, you know, you guys are looking east, right? You're standing on this wall together, maybe Dry and Sirio and Neela are standing there. And she points to the east and she says, did you see that? It's another light streak like this will-o'-wisp. I think there's more. I think there's more to the east. You should go fight him. <laughs> Let's go west. You do pretty well, Mila. <laughs> and then she looks at you and she asks you, just kind of out of nowhere, she says, Why is your city named Fort Trand? That's my name. Tron's going to look at her and say, We had a great friend of ours who helped us take that city and who didn't make it out. And to honor his name, we named it after him. Who? Basque Trand. She says, I've never heard of him. She just sort of sits back and kind of ponders this. And she just says, maybe we were related. I don't know. 23 and me that. Mm -hmm. find out. <laughs> Get that cheek swab. <laughs> so you set this all up to have her say, I don't know who that is. <laughs> I don't know who that is. <laughs> yeah, It's a plot twist. Yeah. I love it. <laughs> I don't know who that is. All that to be like, yeah, I don't know that dude. She was wrong. Just another, she doesn't know. Just another trend, I guess. No, I don't care. Just another trend in the wild. No, it's good. No, you're fine. I thought I think it's funny. No idea. <laughs> well, I figured the family left years ago. What if they're cousins? I mean, I, I mean, it. chances are their family's huge. I mean, the way the king acts. I mean, there's yeah. got to be a lot of Aruxi. I mean, don't, do they lay eggs oh, or do they have live birth? Because they lay eggs. Yeah, there could have been yeah. like sixty of them. Yeah, I just don't think she knows him. It was that yeah. was just the genesis of the trust between. You know, that caused her to. Yeah. Well, Neela, we'll uh, leave you in your thoughts and uh, keep keep watch over the fort tonight. So, well, we're kind of tired. Is there anywhere we could rest? I know there's an available hut. I don't know if we could use that or if you have uh, maybe better accommodations. Is there a West End around here somewhere? There is the Lizard Folk West End. It's We have a double tree. Do you have, or do you have a Marriott Bonvoy account? Oh, I'd, I'd love a cookie. A cookie sounds really nice. Yeah, a warm chocolate chip cookie would be nice. Oh, we're out. Oh. I'm sorry. What kind of trash fort is this? Typical Tran. I wouldn't eat your cookie yeah. anyway. I'm going to the La Quinta. Yeah, get if, if a Tran did make those cookies, I would be highly suspect yeah. of the way they taste this. All right, so let's make camp. Yeah, no, I mean, sure, you can sleep in the spirit hut. She's like, well, I guess you can sleep in the spirit hut. No one there. I don't know, like, dry pissed all over the floor. I don't think I peed on the floor. Uh, you got, like, frightened too, twice. I mean, yeah. that's valid. You were really scared. <laughs> too. Maybe I'll avoid that corner. So is that is, is, is are we going to rest in the, the hut here? I think so. It's better than being out in the open. I don't. I mean, we don't have to put anybody on watch. There's already a fort. I mean, we're concerned that the king is a cannibal, but we're okay sleeping in this hut that had an evil spirit thing living in it before. Yeah, that's a valid point. Can we stay with Neela. Uh, can she? Can, <laughs> can we just? All right. Well, let's pack up our things and swim the river. Here's here's what she says. I. Yes, we have another hut that you can stay in, if you wish. Or the truth is, you can just make camp here inside the walls if you don't want to use one of our huts. That will be just fine. That sounds good. Let's do that. Let's just set up our tents against the fence. So you traveled with lizard folk. Yeah, great warrior. Allied together. And he gave his life to found that city. He did. She considers this. You make camp. As she sort of stands and finishes the watch out that night and 
I mean, she's awesome. Like, she's a badass, for sure. I mean, you saw her during the Will-O-Wisp fight. And I, I don't know if there's any family resemblance to Bashk. You don't know how closely or far away they're related in the family tree. But she's got the same uh, frills frills gone. that he had. She's got <laughs> that. Oh, the frill. Uh, yeah, the frill. Of the, the She's a frill lizard yeah. folk. And not, not everyone here is. Yeah. But she is. I think Mitch might see her kind of interest in Fort Tran and extended invitation. If that's all right with everyone else. Like, hey, you should, you should come check us out. Like, we, it's, a good, it's a good thing we got to go in there. Nobody's eating people. Except for the king. Except for the werewolf. And Except for the king. Coven of witches. <laughs> but. And I think... I think what, Kurtala, Kurtala lets her know he's gonna he's opening up a he's opening up a dojo <laughs> in Fort Trand at some point, and would love to have a lizard folk on the roster. She's like, you practice the martial arts? Yes, yes, I do. The martialist of arts. Oh. Here, here's where you leave things with her. She tells you, yes, I would like to pay my respects to my family. Absolutely, I'll make arrangements and, and visit. We'll just need a short uh, upfront payment for enrollment to the school. <laughs> there it is. So you can make that out. You can make that via check, money order, gold, whatever. Oh. Okay. Yeah. And then um, it's just I'll, it's easy payment plans from then on. It's it's real it's real good. You'll enjoy it. You'll like it. Am I in a contract if I sign up, or can I cancel any time? Don't overthink it. So it'll be okay. Is it'll there? Be okay. We got to move on to the next topic now. <laughs> How many? people have joined you know, oh it or my first one you're getting in early you're getting on the ground floor yeah the founders club yeah i'll okay. have you i'll have you work in matches within within a free bag of chalk do i have to buy my own stuff of course that's part of that's part of the it's called paying your dues she gets a free like rubber <laughs> bracelet though right no no <laughs> instead of live strong it says be strong <laughs> <laughs> be strong <laughs> oh that's fucking great oh. okay yeah, so you touch base with, with Neela, you know, who, again, you know, apparently had trust in you because she'd heard of the name of your kingdom. and uh, But, yeah, in a kind of an anticlimactic turn of events, she never knew of Bashk. Never knew him. But, you know, but that name was a proxy, yeah, yeah, yeah. right, for her to trust you. And she has committed to coming and paying her respects, maybe to her cousin or however they were related. And yeah, as you finish talking to her, again, more will o wisps in the distance. Uh, Everybody roll a perception check. Got a level four perception check. It's a level level five perception check. If we've rested, right? <laughs> uh you're about to rest. It's a middle it's the dead of night. It's like four in the morning. I swear if you don't let us go level five and throw combat at us before. I I would never do that. Twenty seven. And can anyone beat a twenty seven? Cannot. Nope. No, nope. twenty one. Dry. You see it, you know, it, it's above freezing. Some cloud covers come in, a little bit of lightning flashes far in the distance. You, you can see it's flat. The river, it flows toward a larger lake in the next hex. And in the middle of that lake, you see a small island, bigger than the one that you're on now, of course. This one's an island in the middle of the lake, not an island in the middle of the river like you're on now. And on that island in the middle of that lake, you see a tower. And around the top of that tower, you see swirling what's got to be tiny, tiny will-o'-wisps. It's circling, flowing around, almost like a lighthouse off in the distance. That's a problem. And Neela turns to you and she says, you see it? I've seen it too. I think we need to go check it out. I think we need to go back to town and construct some siege weapons first. I think we need to go back to town and chain Chris to a wall. (laughs) Well, that's a good point. (laughs) You got, you got about uh, two weeks. We need to buy. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we probably need to get some scrolls. Yeah, probably need to get something to help with creatures that we can't just hit with a big stick. Yeah, I mean, so does Dry point that out to everybody? Of course, like, I do. I'm assuming. Okay, right. So, like, is that? I'll ask Neil. Is that something new? I've seen it before. You can see it if the night's clear. I think it's grown brighter, hmm. but I've always seen it. Can I roll an Arcana check to see if I know what the hell's going on? Yeah, yeah, or, or yeah, or Society if you want. To, I don't know if you ever heard of this island. It's a twenty-two Arcana. I mean, it's it's definitely will o' wisps out there for sure. You know, like, is this how they breed? They they, they look. Is this how they I'm breed? Sorry. Like, is this like is this a will o' wisp nest? No, 
it's it's not really about that. It's just that they seem to be inhabiting this island, and that you, you think to yourself, well, surely they've got to leave to feed because they eat fear, right, from other creatures. I mean, these are extra planar, horrible creatures that feed on fear. So either that fear gets served up to them on this island, or they have to leave. And you know what you you think to yourself? Well, I'll bet you this one here on this island with the lizard folk probably came from there and found himself a really nice little you know feed trough here. Okay. Well, what do you think, folks? You wanna let's rest. Is is this is this will o' wisp nest the most in, or nest or whatever it is the most important thing we've got going on? I mean, there's so much still got... going on right now. Like we've got trolls yeah. wandering around. We've got you know. This we, we need to find some wolfsbane. We've got probably need to take kingdom term somewhere. Yeah, although we are kind of in the southern area where Boken kind of pointed, the, or kind of yeah. gave us the direction to go look for wolfsbane. Oh, yeah. So that's I mean, true. Exploring that direction might be knocking out two things. We still also have like the black tier yep. invasion or like the attempt on Lindsay somebody's life. Yeah, there's a lot of sh- there's like yeah. there's a big quest log. Yeah. It's a yeah, sandbox. It is. Well, let's go check out the tower. Let's rest. Let's rest. Let's re- let's take a nap. You guys rest. Yeah. And uh, the towers. The towers right there. Is it like a two day or one day trip? Or it's is it- it's it's a one day trip probably. It's okay. like you think it's a hex. Well, we over. should just go check that out on the way back then. I mean, if we're here, we're here. Do we yeah. need to resupply before we go? Or are we all good? Yeah. So you yep. guys rest. Yep. And as you rest, as we said last time, you <sighs> level up. To Yay! level five. five. Yay! Congratulations. Yay! Level five. What the heck, wow. guys? Oh my god. Stat Woo! boosts, ability score yeah. boosts, Begging CNS for for, and all yeah. kinds of new episodes. stuff. Did you guys did you yeah. guys prepare? Yeah, I'm already leveled. Leveled. ready. I don't. Did you guys prepare yeah. to do click this? away from Absolutely. Being level five? <laughs> oh, oh well uh, can you take you guys thirty forty five one minute each? Can you just take us through the high points, you know, of stuff? You know, guys? What how, what'd you do? Yeah. Yeah. Who wants to start? I'll go. All right, so Dry took a ancestry feat with general training, and then the general feat he took was toughness. Oh, cool. toughness and then my nice. skill increases, I think, are athletics and medicine. And then Very nice. I think that's it. That's pretty much it. Get ability uh, boost. Yeah, yeah, I did. Um, Throw those points around. I did strength, con, int, and dex. Nice. So your dex went to 19, then you're on the way to 20 on that. Boy, the difference from four to five yeah. is huge. It yeah. is. I mean,. All right. Anything else That's on it. Dry Colmay? I guess no. no there's there's no class that. feed or anything at fifth. You know, it's uh, mostly I took, just I got weapon, weapon and... expertise and trackless step. Nice. Okay. All right. What about Kritala, uh, the tosser? The tosser. Yeah. So same deal, right? Um, ability boost. So that that unfortunate, uh, you know, plus four in strength. So I stay at nineteen, and yeah, you just have to wait. Um, so we got that, uh, added one to con. So it moved me up to a 12 and, uh, plus four in dex and nice. plus two in, uh, charisma. So oh, more intimidation for the, for the showmanship. Yeah, exactly. And then, uh, for, for skills, um, I actually, uh, went to expert on my lore, uh, which is the oh. glad editorial. So hopefully to find out those hey. skill checks a little bit easier. Uh, you know, you, you have found good uses for that. So I'm. Yeah, I think that's a great so idea. And pretty plus, excited. You know, come on, man. You're a wrestler. Well, and to continue that thought, uh, what is wrestling without a good feud, <gasps> right? So, <laughs> sure. Kurt, so Katala, when, you know, growing up where he did, he's used to humans being kind of aggressive towards Strix. Like they yeah. are seen as outsiders. There's rumors, there's devils, there's all sorts of these things, right? So he just kind of, that's how humans are. Now he met you guys, and now he realizes, no, those other humans are just assholes. <laughs> and so he has got he has got a feud. He's, he took a feat called Strix Defender. And what this means is your ancestral feud with humans gives you experience dealing with vicious foes, and your vengeance knows no bounds. Hmm. You gain a plus one circumstance bonus to intimidation, perception, and survival checks against humans. Oh, my God. Wow. As well as on damage rolls against humans with weapons and unarmed attacks. So kind of the old favorite enemy feat, but specifically for humans. And, yeah, big bonus. Now, the drawback is, however, your hatred of humans is immediately obvious, giving you a negative two circumstance penalty to diplomacy checks against them and usually starting their attitude one step worse towards you, which... 
you know what? Catala's kind of a heel. I think it plays in fine. So, yeah, pretty excited about that. Man, the tax man. I assume we'll have some humans that we fight, so I think it'll probably work You've just got a lot of human citizens at Fort Trand. Well, you know, they better stay in line. I Um, guess they better. (laughs) Yeah. Uh, Also went up to expert strikes, so... Uh, so that's a bump on my, uh, went from plus 11 to plus 14. Uh, gotcha. Nice. Yeah, so pretty excited. What about uh, Mitchell? Uh, yeah, Mitchell took, he did finally take medicine. That seemed like a little glaring <laughs> hole in our skill yeah. set. What were we, that last big fight, everyone was like, no, just, we don't yeah, have medicine. Just to look at to <laughs> feel better. Just, yeah, put a, some dirt on it. Ability boosts, pretty standard. Strength, con, dex, and int. So I'm pushing 19 int. He's, this guy is so fucking smart. Like, I can't even calculate. But no wisdom, so he's still kind of dumb. It's true. He's book smart. He's, you know, B.D. Right. Wong. In <laughs> right, Jurassic right. Park. It's a good call. Yeah. yeah. I thought about whether he right. should, just whether he could. Um, for feats, he took Natural Ambition, which gives him access to a level one class feat. And he took oh, something to yeah. give him a little bit more mobility, which he'll okay. drop on you when we use it. And I also kind of, same as gotcha. Bill, got the okay. uh, weapons expertise. So, I mean, since my martial class, it's quite nice. You guys get yeah, it's going to be a lot harder for me to roll shitty, but I'll, I'll still manage. <laughs> yeah, you'll manage. Yeah, you might. Well, you might. Uh, it's random. Uh, last but not least. So, at class level five, casters unlock third level oh. spells. Ooh, nice. yes. And my bloodline spell is the nice. signature fireball. Oh, yeah. no. <laughs> that's, it's over. That's really all I need to talk about for my guy. Yeah. <laughs> Let's go see some will o Suddenly Mike's like, I didn't prep enough. We'll pick up next time, guys. <laughs> Better uh, add another will o or two <laughs> to this island. Well, gotcha. Well, nice. Nice food. The, you know, Ability score boost and everything. Sirio Xavier Stratova can now cast Fireball. I'm fucked. <laughs> so excited. Y'all wake up the next morning and uh, people are out and around. The weather's warming up a little bit and the lizard folk have reacted to this. They're up and around. You see some people. They're fishing in the stream, you know, next to you. Uh, people are standing around, milling around. There's a couple people that are selling wares. There's a bit of a rudimentary economy here. You know, they they have um, fish hooks are their currency. Like they trade in that because fish hooks are how you get food. So if you can craft fish hooks, that's that's become coinage for them. And so that's how they that's how they that's how their economy works. Hmm. So you, you see this in action. You're kind of, you know, milling around this, this city a little bit, this little town. You see Neela Trand, and you see the King Vesket has emerged from his, um, from his. Uh, he's walking all bow legged. Yeah, he's. Uh, yeah, he looks. You know what he. You know. You know what he looks relaxed. Yeah, he does. Uh, <laughs> speaking of which, can you imagine what it's like going to bed one night and then waking up and being a level higher? Like we've got to feel oh, like it's got to feel amazing. Fucking, yeah, gold. It's, I just wake up fatter usually. <laughs> you know, and so I, I know it, I know it the other way around. I wake up, my body works worse than it did. Uh, what's the conversion rate for gold piece to fish hook? I don't know. Think they use gold? I think it's just one fish. Is that hook like an exchange here? Leaves or something? I don't know the answer to your question. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you had really. I had thought that far. Can can Mitchell craft yes. fish hooks? I can craft a fuck ton of fish hooks. Yeah, you can craft fish hooks. I think we just end the adventure here and retire yeah. multi billionaires yes. with all our fish hooks. But what you'll do, you'll destroy yeah. the economy. I mean, it's it's not that you can buy more and more. It's the fish hooks become worth less and less. I mean, look, he tried he tried to, to supplant their king. Now he's ruining his, their economy. It's classic. Brad is a member of the CIA. <laughs> now we just got to get their population hooked on like dope or something <laughs> like what is what is the drug of choice for the best we can start they we can, like to eat we people can start pumping that in from fort Tran. is skooma is is skooma a thing in skooma. this universe skooma. no do you know that in the gm's guide in the game mastery guide there's all kinds of drugs yeah and i i don't i i tried to read the stat blocks for the drugs i have an alchemist in a in another game and i thought it'd be cool if he was addicted to drugs but uh, the, the i couldn't 
quite work out the rules. It kind of seemed like drug addiction just sort of will eventually kill your character. Just like real like, life. Which I, maybe that's the message. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> <kind of> what <laughs> happens. <laughs> like, it's not a sustainable rule set. Like, you can't just take the drugs every day. It you gets gotta, worse. You gotta, you gotta <laughs> roll a DC 10 flat check for rehab to see if you, you yeah, pass or yeah. fail and yep. gotta go back. Depending on how yeah, hard you go and bad. what you're doing, you got about one to five years. I was going to say, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, what? Yeah. You have a yeah, jail sentence of 1d6. <laughs> it depends on the sentencing guidelines yeah. and in effect in your particular community. Yeah. All right. So King walks out all, all relaxed. So the King walks out, right. We'll get there, guys. The King walks out, looks very relaxed, and he locks eyes with King Sertova. He approaches you and he he says, I understand that maybe more formal diplomatic introductions are in order. King, I thank you for ending the threat in my community. I was taken in by who I thought was my ancestor, and he caused us to do wrong. Please accept my commitment that that behavior will not continue. Well, I hate to take him at uh, face value just because. I'm going to try to sense motive here with a perception. Do it. Oh, got a 18 on the die plus 12, 30 Ooh. total. Wow. He's calculated it, and you see his calculation that he was embarrassed in front of his entire kingdom and that he, it, to remain in power, must embrace this change now. And go with the flow if he's going to stay in. Uh, he sees your community as stronger than his. And so he seeks to... He, he's trying to save himself right now. And this is his play. To be like, I was wrong. I won't do it anymore. Thank you for helping me. That's the calculus. That's, that's how he's playing this right now. Hmm. But you also know that he's playing it this way. Because he has to. Right. So... He's being genuine, but his motive for being genuine is, you see what I'm saying? Yeah. He he doesn't feel really, he doesn't actually feel sorry. He's just sorry because he has to be sorry. Sorry he got well, caught. Well, yeah, but, but is, but is it, a, is it a distinction without a difference? Right. That's yeah. that. I suppose that's the question for you. I mean, he's going to act right. It's politically advantageous for him to behave this way. And that's politically advantageous, advantageous for us to have him actually live up to that. So. Kuchalo feels like it's a fair compromise and he's good with it. Yeah, thank you, uh, King Vesket, for, you know, committing to returning to uh, civilized uh, behavior. Um, I trust you'll keep the rest of your tribe, you know, in line with uh, with this. I do have to tell you, though, if we, if we hear any rumblings or rumors, um, we may have to, you know, how we dealt with the Will-O-Wisp, um, whatever's causing uh, that behavior, we'll, we'll have to come back and deal with it. I understand. My my request is that you send an envoy ahead of you to us to alert me that you will be entering my territory. Yeah, we'll totally do that. His <laughs> turn to look at you searchingly. He says, thank you for your commitment to diplomacy. That's what he says. And again, like many of the leaders that you've come into contact with, whether it's Snickerdoodle or uh, Lady Jamandi or now this guy. He's he's a little smarter than he looks, right? He's it's it's a game. It's a, it's a bit of a game of chess with him a little bit, right? You know what are what are his motivations? What are his goals? What does he want? So that's what you're faced with with him. But they could be a trade partner, right? You could profit from having them here. I mean, so. we'll we'll have an opportunity to have them pledge fealty, right? And if if that doesn't go well, maybe we, we need to come back. I'm going to pass on the uh, the proteins from the yeah. trade. Uh, yeah, he might want to check there. I'll also decline products. any invitations to have dinner with him. Don't really want to be the dinner. He continues as he's he's talking to Sirio. He says, I'm told that you have been alerted as to the Will-O-Wisp presence to the east. My request is that you take Neela with you to investigate to ensure that uh, we are not in danger from that threat as a favor to me. Is he trying to get rid of Neela? I think he might, because he might have read her hand signals from the night before. I mean, they're universally yeah, known. Everybody knows the best hand signals. Um, 
Mr. Sertova? Yeah, I think all the help we can get. Um, Neela definitely proved herself during the first encounter with the Will-O-Wisp, and she can she help out with a whole pack of them. In addition to that, we look after and uh, make sure she came back in, in one piece. Do you have anything that could help us uh, combat these these things? I don't know, like uh, glitter dust or something? Go see Liker in the Southern Hut. He's a scribe. His magic man might be able to help. Here, here are ten fish hooks <laughs> from the fish hook treasury. He pulls it out like a key ring. He's got a king. He's just counting on, you know, he looks like a janitor's key ring, you know. He's got all these fish hooks, and he hands them over. Katala reaches into his gi and writes a receipt for ten fish hooks and <laughs> hands, it, <laughs> hands it to the uh, man to keep our financial records straight. Oh, I see. You value documentation as a community. Okay. He has no pockets. He watches. He just folds the paper and holds it awkwardly in front of him. He sends you over to Liker. Liker is this ancient lizard folk. Old, old, old. Looks like he's been around forever. This this guy knows how to craft scrolls of many level two spells, including both fairy fire and glitter dust. But would need, you know, a day to do it. He says, I can do it. I'd be happy to. For fish hooks, which I will use to fish in the, in the ocean. I mean, the, the river. I think, I don't know, I think it's worth spending a day. Do we have the time economy to spend a day of downtime? And I think so. We still have to uh, explore, you know, officially yeah. this, this area. So we can explore while they're making our things and then come back and pick them up and then head out to the Isle of Wisp. Sure. Um, I don't want to split the party, but could uh, Mitch would love to spend a day reconfiguring his. Armor. I'll just go outside and fish. I don't care. Hey, can you make me some fish hooks? <laughs> five hundred. <laughs> just, <laughs> just, just like two. Just start throwing fish hooks at the kids. Yeah, there you go. Cartel is going to go challenge a local strongman to a to a wrestled match. Yes. Oh see if he can gosh. win. Some, see if he can win some money in his his day off here. Sure, sure. And you know, you do you you. You find uh, the hut where they eat bug shit pasta and drink, you know, um, vodka. And, uh, you know, yeah, you do. You get into some scuffles. Uh, there's not a lot of not a lot of profit to be had. But, yeah, you, you spend some time in the community and get to know some people. How many fish hooks did I win? You won three fish hooks. Three fish nice hooks. There job. you go. Uh, Kratala comes back to the group and proudly shows off the fish hooks he won. I don't know. You guys have been very focused on the fish hooks. I just, uh, they're, they're an <laughs> insular community. And this is, they don't have gold here. They just have fish hooks. And you know what? One fish hook is worth one gold. Oh, oh shit. Oh, damn. Whoa. Brad, wow. why don't you? Brad, I, just get, I just gave away three doing. gold. Stop what you're crying. doing, Brad. <laughs> yeah. Sorry about your economy. It works out really well. <laughs> We're going to need 5,000. Actually, a fish hook. Fish hook here is worth a lot more than a fish hook in Fort Drain. Well, the they don't that. have, yeah, they probably don't have gold. So, like, I could give them a bunch of fish hooks, and I'm just going to get, like, bug shit pasta packets. I'm not going to yeah, get anything good. So, yeah. All right, well, bitch is done fixing his armor, and we're ready I'm to go. I'm done fishing, so I'm ready to go. Okay. Sleep another night, and then let's go check out some Will-O-Wisps. Does it take a day for him to craft whatever? Yeah, it does, yeah. Okay. Yeah, he... So he gives you a scroll of glitter dust and a scroll of fairy fire. You got one of each. Cool. And Sirio is the only one that can use those. No one else has trick magic item or anything like that. Do I do not. Know. I okay. think so. So you set out then, and you... Here, let's get back to the Stolen Lands map. You guys remember this? Oh, yeah. You've been there. Look at that. And here is the Lair of the Lizard King. It is here on this map here. You. It looks like this is... This hex that contains the lake and the island is technically like a plains hex so yeah you could for instance you could travel into the hex and you could explore it all tomorrow and then in the late afternoon you could probably start looking at this island is that what you want to do yep yeah i think so okay it's kind of a windy day today it's cold on your ears it's hard to hear with the wind you feel like you know if you were meteorologist meteorologically inclined if you if you knew anything about the weather you'd know that uh, <laughs> if you knew anything about the weather you'd know that a warm front is coming Ooh, in good. warm air is rushing in oh, yeah. and, and, and uh, high pressure system or whatever they call it 
uh, with 19 intelligence. Mitch probably knows that. Mitch would totally know that. And he would tell everybody about it. I know about the weather now. I understand this. You get to this, this hex, okay? And you don't find much terribly of interest here except for the occasional corpse. And the corpses in this uh, hex are not consumed the way that they were around the lizard folk place. But they are, they lie dead, their belongings still on them, just rotted out. Some appear to be months old, some perhaps years. And as you go through this, you find a total of 15 gold pieces across like three corpses, an array of like regular gear. I mean, the, the water skins and the, and the rations are useless to you, but you know, you find you know, a couple useful things. If there was any gear that you wanted, there's maybe a chance you might find some stuff on here, some bedrolls, things like that. Torches, greater health elixirs. Oh, let's roll for it. <laughs> you find oh. two hmm. greater wow. health elixirs. Fish yes. hooks. Yeah, fish hooks. Any fish yes. hooks. Yes. You and find the occasional lizard folk, some fish hooks. Oh, yeah. And can we? Uh, they all? Uh, can we tell they all been killed the same way? So like different, died different ways. They don't have obvious like wounds. I mean, you're like, oh, will o wisps for sure. I mean, you're just like, of course, okay. will o wisps. They're killing people. They're feeding on their fear. This is a bad deal. And they're scattered about the hex. It's not like they're all piled up in a. Yeah, they're scattered around. Okay. Like, you wouldn't want to be here at night. You think that, like, coming here at night, camping in this hex, like, bad idea. This is a dangerous yeah. place. Sounds spooky. You know? And you, you find that there's this large lake. Roll a society check. Definitely not. Oh, that's a big roll. Let's see. Oh. That is a... 13. 25. Oh, I rolled a 1. <laughs> 23 for Kritala. Oh, 25. 23 for Kritala. Nice roll, Mitch. 25 and 23. Kritala, you might have kind of encountered this or heard some things about this before. Mitchell, you uh, also have rolled high. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> this is called Candlemere Lake. Okay. And the island in the middle of the lake is called Candlemere Island. Some people say the island has no name. Some people say the lake has no name. Some people call it Candlemere Island. Some people call it Candlemere Lake. It's kind of a weird sort of inconsistency between people. But irrespective of, of, of that distinction, you know that this is Candlemere. And you've heard that generations ago, this place was maybe a little culty. Maybe a little culty. It's no surprise to you today that there's a swarm of will-o'-wisps at the top of Candlemere Tower. Um, but you would know that no one has lived on or around Candlemere Lake in generations. This place has a bad reputation. I'm sure your colleagues are like, well, why didn't you say something when we started coming here? Well. But that's okay. what you know. This is Candlemere. C-A-N-D-L-E-M-E-R-E. -E -E, Candlemere. Well, regardless of what its reputation is, it is only two hexes away from Fortran, so we yep. we got to clear it. Yep. Yeah. Hmm. The lake is is uh, wide. I mean, it's this is a significant swim. You would normally need a boat or something for this, but given that the king can become a shark, how long does the the shark thing last? Last a minute. Oh. Oh, you're in trouble. We need a boat. How big is the lake? Yeah. You would have known. You would have needed a boat. Is this... So this is in a, a river, not a lake? Or is this in a lake, not a river? This is a lake that okay. has rivers that both flow in and out of it. Okay. So it's is it considered moving water? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, I mean, it's... Reaching this thing is hard. But you would know. You would have known that you would have needed a boat. So... My assumption is... Spend an extra day, like, crafting a raft? That or the or folks or, at... Yeah. Uh, the Lizard King's community. Right. Hey, you know what? For the three fish hooks, you know. There you go. I rented a raft for three you fish hooks. You got a little hooks. raft. There you go. Sure. Great deal. Yeah, you rented it. So you have a little raft. The raft looks like the uh, the one from Castaway with the porta potty sail. Oh, hell yeah. That's what it looks like. Very eruxy. Are we sure. using the uh, Will O' Wisp as, Wis as Wilson in the front? Yeah, that's them? right. Yeah, you got, we got Will -O you got Wispy the Will O' Yeah, Wilson. <laughs> Wilson Mount on the front. Wilson Wisp. And you guys begin to paddle. And it's cold. I mean, the the lake is cold. I love to talk about how cold things are. It's cold. It's cold. And eventually, you're about 30 feet off the western coast on your little raft. What 
do you do? There's oh, and you see a little dock, like you see a place where you know looks like there's maybe some sign of civilization here, a little place where you could lash the boat. Um, just quick question back to Mitch's Arcana check um, in the fight with a will o wisp. Do I know anything about them being? Uh, diplomatic at all, or are they just hostile? Evil as fuck. Evil as fuck, okay. So, gear up for a fight, regardless of what we see or don't see. I think it's time for some exploration activities. Uh, We haven't made the island yet, have we? I thought we were on the dock right now, aren't we? Well, you're kind of, you're kind of up here. You're kind of on your boat. Um, I guess Dry would like to roll a perception check to see what I, just to see what he sees. Yeah, sure, roll it. Dry falls off the boat as he's looking. Because he just rolled a, <laughs> just rolled a nat one. Oh, dear. Yeah. you. Um, the, the foliage is dense here. Just, and it just you just can't so discern much about this place. You probably think it just looks like very easy terrain. When in reality, it's extremely hard terrain. <laughs> All right. Uh, Mitch does not like the open water, so he is doing nothing but like why haven't you the... fashioned a propeller yet why are we still rowing this thing basically <laughs> i'm basically wearing a cadillac on my back like i don't want to get near the water <laughs> well do we want to tie up at the dock or hit the beach dock please you maneuver the, the craft toward the dock let's get a driving check from mitchell oh god oh, it's, it's like starship fighting all over again <laughs> uh with my piloting lore that is a even 20 no problem. White knuckling as you are, you navigate the craft uh, to the dock and you are able to tie it off. This thing should be waiting here for you if you ever are able to return to it. And the six of you step onto the dock one after another. And you're now standing here. It's about five in the afternoon. Okay. Still you know, starting to get a little darker. Light starting to fade. You think nightfall is in about two hours maybe an hour and a half Oof. and the, you can just hear the the water lapping against the dock and just wildlife just this this island is just teeming with animals there's a sandy path that stretches out in front of you twists and turns through the dense foliage as you're now here on the island you realize that off this path you're in gr- that would be greater difficult terrain as in like 15 feet to move five of Ooh. movement mm. The path winds around and eventually becomes a a steep hill. And as that steep hill goes up, eventually that hill meets with what you know to be Candlemere Tower, which stands about 50 feet. And and it's also 20 feet above ground, like above sea level, above lake level. So not only is the tower tall, but it's on like a little ridge, which is probably how you saw it, you know, from 12 miles away or whatever. And... You know, unlike last night, you don't see anything swirling above it, but the tower just kind of like, it's like the sun glare is hitting you too as you're trying to look at it. It's kind of hard, but that's what you see as you stand on the stock. What do you guys think? Move up carefully. Camp for the night. I don't really like the idea of camping on this island. We're not going to be able to camp, I don't think. Yeah, because it just seems going up here at night is a really dumb idea. If there's a place we can get to and camp safely. Right here on the dock would probably be the safest spot. Yeah. Yep. You think on this island itself? No, just right here on the dock. So it's on the island. Yeah, but I mean, unless we get attacked from the water, everything will funnel in from the front. So you think it take the boat back to shore? How back far, to the other how That's what I'm wondering. How long did it take us to get here, Mike? I I think it's probably twenty to thirty minutes travel. I mean, we can. Ro- I we mean, can, we can try camping here and well, just and, keep I mean, watch. we still got how many hours? Two hours? Yeah. Till sundown. I mean, if we just walk straight up this path into the thing, I mean. Well, I guess, yeah, that's a good good thing to talk about. Do we want to take the path, or we do, do we want to uh, schwack through some of this uh, growth? Dude, I'm all about hey, diddle, diddle. <laughs> we could send uh, somebody with some high stealth kind of through the... I mean, I could go kind of recon. sneak around in the woods. I mean, would we say that was 15 feet of movement for every square? Yeah. Yeah, it's difficult terrain. Yeah, no, it's greater difficult, right? Yeah. Oh, greater? Yeah. Okay. Hmm. Well, I mean, I'm I'm fine with that. It's just going to be slow going. Yeah, I mean, I think it'd be worth to, to scout it out a little bit. I mean, yeah. it would take, you could spend 15, 20 minutes, and even with being greater difficult terrain, you could still move a yeah. decent amount. Right. I mean, yeah. Yeah. So you guys want to wait on the dock and send dry into the foliage? I can just bring you guys with me and just quiet allies that shit. You know that, right? We can all just scrooch through there. 
Yeah, it's based off of the lowest dis- or, pers- or whatever stealth yeah. check, though, right? What's our lowest stealth check? Uh, plus two. Oh, Jesus. Is what I, I have. Forgot. Cadillac, the Cadillac man. <laughs> <laughs> Not made for quiet. Uh, yeah, so I guess, where do you want me to go in at, though? Like, just go in here? I see. You kind of come around. Yep. Kind of cut between here, those, those giant trees here. there. I think if you came out to where I'm pinging right now, you'd be able to get a pretty good visual on whatever trap was around I, the bend. I mean, that's my concern is that first blind sight, that blur first blind spot. You, So here's my thoughts. Like, you'd scope that out and then give us the all clear, and we'll move up to that first corner. For those of you that can't see the map, what we're talking is oh, is, dry, yeah. is is dry sneaking across about 60 yards of, of forest um, and kind of on to where the path. The path kind of loops up around the forest, so we're, like, cutting straight across it is what we're talking mm-hmm. about. Yeah. All right. Well, let's. Yeah. Bill, uh, I see you could follow the expert. Um, with you, and you could be the two yeah, of if us. If you want to go, if you want to go, I can quiet That's allies. I'm, I'm trained in stealth. Yeah. Oh, are we all going, or just we're just well, sending these two? Just us two, because I mean, how stealthy are you? Okay. I'm I'm trained, so I I have eight. No, I mean, uh, Kratala. Oh, if you're talking follow the leader, that's what I, was, I thought. I thought we were just going to do that. Everybody's going to go, but if it's just you two going, yeah, I'm, I'm not stealthy. Oh, okay, yeah. So Chris and I, so Mitch is going to go to the end of the dock. So Sirio and I are going to enter the woods about here. And then just kind of go up to there, this area here, so we can see what's going on around the bend. And then we'll come back, and if you guys, if we can get you guys there safely, we'll move you there. And then we'll go forward this way again, and just try to... So you'll, you'll start up kind of, you'll start up going kind of northeast. Yeah. Up, kind of follow the path within the woods, and then cut back down. Yeah, we just want to get to up the, and see to the southeast. what's around the corners, so we're yeah. not just trotting up there. Well, it would seem to me, since you're moving half speed through greater difficult terrain... Then what I would what I would ask is as um, Serio copies Dry's technique, I would need a stealth check per five feet of movement on this, which I'm sure will be riveting. <laughs> well, let's do it. Uh, all right. Uh, what the? So how many count? Let's count them out. Am I adding my straight mod or do I get a bonus from following? Dry. It's ten just to get to there. So ten checks and then you know. Let's do this, Chris. Get on the VTT. I want you to roll ten d twenty. Oh yeah, there we go. And tell me what your low rolls are. Ten d twenty plus your. You can do ten d twenty plus your modifier, right? Yeah. yeah, of course. Is it just my mod, or do I get a bonus from dry? You get a plus two bonus if he's an expert, plus your level. I think that's only if you're untrained, though. Yeah, give yourself a plus two to, this, to your stealth skill. So okay. As you do this, jeez, it's gonna be really high. Mm-hmm. How many d twenty? Ten. Ten. They're all 20s. I'm turning this game off and going to bed. <laughs> See you guys tomorrow. There's going to be a one in there. There, Nope. Yep, there no one. be a one in there. No. Chris, that's like... No, oh my God. All above 10. Excellent. Shit. Excellent Whoa. array. Oh, like 19, 16, 10, 16, 10, 15, 12, 14, 6, 13. That's an amazing... That's a really nice spread. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, let's move you guys accordingly here. So I assume you're staying side by yeah. side, one after another, right? So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, oh, no. nine. On that ninth square that you moved, Sarah, you make a noise. Oh, I stepped a on a stick. You step on something, or like you—you you know what happens? You lose your foot. Uh, not your foot. No. You oh. lose your boot. <laughs> In a bog, like you, like there's a like a mud thing. You know, I watched Ferris Bueller's Day Off lately. You know, when the principal loses his shoe in the yeah. mud, yep. yeah. that's what happens to you. That would be a hell of a reveal if we just found out that this is he, Sirio's legs been fake this whole time, and he just lost it in the bog. <laughs> it's just kind of like, <laughs> he almost lost it. Yeah, trap. that's right. The bear trap almost took it. Yeah, it is. It is that same foot, by the way. Maybe it's just never been quite right. But guys, you pull your foot up. There's like that that. that Telltale oh. suction sound. <laughs> you know? That's my favorite sound. Oh. Behind you, you hear a roar. Oh, fuck. Okay. Oh, is it a friendly us. roar? It is not a friendly roar. Uh, <laughs> this gigantic uh, two by two carnivorous uh, heap of wet, rotting vegetation oh. emerges from the nearby beach. I'm going to reveal it to you on the map here. Fuck. That's they what can, happens here. Well, I'm sure the guys in the pier can see it. They can. Yeah, we heard it. Deep in the yeah, woods, yeah. You guys yeah. hear it. You guys see it. You guys are kind of over there. Uh, but this thing, like, emerges out of the muck near the side. 
And he, again, he just looks like this collection of like thick and thin vines. They're kind of all spiraled and wrapped around each other. This thing's got like four or five kind of leg things that it walks around on. And it just looks like a big old mass of vegetative crap. And it emerges, reacting to the suction sound of Sirio's boot, and begins shambling itself toward you. Everyone uh. sees it. Everyone's aware. Roll for initiative. Oh, oh, here we go. Uh, those of you guys uh, that are being sneakies, you can use your stealth mod if you wish, or if your perception's higher, oh, you can do that. My stealth is way higher. Fuck yeah. Rolling high. Fuck yeah. <laughs> Sirio. Uh, 26. Oh, ho, ho, good. Dry. 29. Oh, wow. ho, good. Gritala. Uh, 29, natural 20. Nice. Whoa. Nice work. Will you go before or after dry? Uh, I'm going to go after dry. Mitchell. Uh, 25. Damn. I'm really proud of that. You guys just fucking. <laughs> <laughs> Bill, how did Lindsay do? Oh, let's find out. <laughs> Am I still playing Lindsay? Oh, shucks. Hell yeah. All right, let me, get, let me get her sheet up, and then we can roll on it. Just stupid. This is stupid. She rolled a 12. <laughs> Fuck yeah. Total? Lindsay. She's back on the pier, though. Lindsay needs to do an intimidation check at some point where she just says, bless your heart. Bless your heart. <laughs> God bless him. Dreykel May, it is your turn, nestled within yes. greater difficult terrain. Oh, this, God. This uh, monster, monstrous tree fucking thing coming toward you. What do you do? What do I do? Dry is going to make. What do you do? Dry is going to make a movement over to here. Who's going to follow him? Just because who does. And then I'm going to hide. I think. Okay, so you're going to take two move actions to move two yep. squares. Oh wait, that's right. Good. No, oh I'll God. just move. That's how slow we're moving. I'll just. Oof. I mean, he doesn't. He only heard the slurp of. You can hide yeah, where like, you're he at. He only now. heard the slurp you cover of that tree. Serious boot. So yeah, Dry's just going to hide. Okay. Want to stealth check. Yeah, make that uh, stealth check. That's a twenty-seven. Nice. That's a solid roll. <laughs> that's 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 uh, what I would call good. <laughs> that's it. That's what all I'm doing. Do you do next? I'm gonna ready in action. No, I'm not. Okay. Uh, yeah, I, yeah, I can do that. Can I? Yeah, yeah, you can. Yeah. What are you readying, and what's the trigger? Uh, I'm going to ready an attack with my sword because it was in his hand while he was. I'm assuming it was in his hand while he was traversing the woods because. Sure. You know it is what it is. Um, and if. That thing gets to Sirio before these guys get to it, and he attacks Sirio. I'm gonna attack it. I'm gonna try. I'm gonna try and defend Sirio by like stepping in front of him and taking the brunt of the attack. Well, so you can ready one yeah. action. So are you telling me that you're going to, if this thing gets into melee with you, you're gonna resolve an attack yes. on it? Well, okay. What about if it gets in melee with Sirio since he's right next to me? You wouldn't have. You wouldn't be able. Uh, to. You gotta be yeah, a range yeah. attack. Yeah. All uh, right. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. Okay. All right, very good. So you, so you, you make a high check, and then you're sitting there with your Eldori dueling sword, assuming that this thing will come toward you. Kritala, you watch this. What do you do? Yeah, so Kritala, uh, he's going to triple move, um, and that will put him That'll put him there. Okay. That will end his turn. You just go wading into the foliage. Yep. Okay, approaching this thing. Nice. Sirio, your turn. Oh my. So, is Charged. my foot still Charged. stuck in the mud? No, you're good. You, you're just, you, your boot is still in the mud, but you're just, you got one bare foot, and it's fine. You can move normally. It's just undignified. <laughs> <laughs> this tree I'm next to, how tall is it? Uh, but, uh, 10 feet tall. Oh, that's really short. <laughs> oh, 15 feet tall. That's you know I don't go outside. That's still pretty you short. You know I don't go <laughs> 20 feet tall. Um, <laughs> 20 feet tall. 17 and a half feet tall. <laughs> okay. Um, hmm. Are there any sturdy branches, like, high up? Yeah, you could climb the tree. You want to climb that tree? I think so. Oh, yeah, you can do it. Um, you're, you're not next to the trunk, so you would need one move action to get to the trunk. Oh, okay. Um, well, I'm not going to do that then. Yeah, I, I, you see how I'm seeing that? I mean, I, I see the trunk kind of a square away from you, and you're kind of at the more... Okay, so we're not next to this tree. Yeah, well, you're next to the leaves of the tree, but well, but you're saying do the branches come out toward you? So that you are you telling me you don't want to climb the trunk? You want to climb like the branches that are next to you? Oh yeah, I just wanted to see if it'd be possible to climb the tree from where I'm at. Let's roll. Let's have a little fun. 
there is not a sturdy branch above you. Okay. That you can jump onto. Um, well, I'm going to... Uh, that was a 50-50 for those of you at home. So this thing down in the down in the muddy shore area, I'm going to see if I can uh, use a little knowledge of nature and if I can... If I've come across reading about this thing or what the heck it is. Recall that knowledge. Ooh, 19 plus 10, 29. Nice. Yeah, this is a shambler. Uh, oh. Shamblers are cunning, carnivorous plants that resemble heaps of wet, rotting vegetation. Even when standing uh, erect on their stumpy legs, yeah. shamblers don't have much in the way of identifiable anatomy. <laughs> but they're erect. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, okay. they'll feel pulled together, guys. <laughs> I guess number 15, he said erect. They are tangles of parasitic vines that lash out at prey with their longest creepers and twine together to deliver powerful blows. Sometimes called shambling mounds, these ambush predators and have a particular fondness for flesh and are most well known for their ability to hunker down and hide in plain sight. A shambler can draw nutrients from plant matter or soil, but won't do so if if it suspects meat might soon wander near and indeed may lie in wait for days in anticipation of such a meal. I will give you um, a fact about these things. Uh, you tell me what you want to know. Again, res- you know, we- resistances, weaknesses, things of that nature, immunities, whatever you want. Or low save. Tell me what you want. What you really, really want. Uh, what's a weak to? Um, I, I, it doesn't have a weakness, but I will give you a resistance. This thing is resistant to fire. Five. Jesus. And it's hmm. because it's so wet that it, it cannot... Uh, be lit on fire very easily. Oh, to resist. And furthermore, it is immune to electricity. Hmm. So it, it nullifies five fire damage and it's immune to electricity. Hmm. And in fact, I will tell you this. You've heard of this before. It's a, it's a good role. And this plays into the electricity immunity. Uh, you know that whenever a shambler takes uh, would take electricity damage um, or is targeted with an electricity effect, that it actually gains 12 temporary HP and becomes Whoa. quickened until the start of its next Whoa. turn. <laughs> oh, that's crazy. So it like feeds off of electricity. Don't or shock it. I just like it. picture it getting like so, zapped and like it's just moving really yeah, fast. Good check because, yeah, do not use electric arc on this thing. <laughs> wow, that would have been bad. Hmm, so... I got two mm-hmm. actions left, huh? Ah, uh, well, it's a shambler, and I can see it's kind of shambling in my direction. Yeah, it it has reacted to your boot suction fiasco. Uh, I think I'm gonna, hmm, I'm gonna cast animal form, and uh, well, let's transform into a deer this time. Oh, a beautiful deer, uh, a doe or a buck? A buck. Buck. Hell yeah. Come on. Of course. My name is Buck. It says I have antlers, so unless a dog can have antlers. Yeah. No, you never know. It's, you know. Okay. Mitchell Lucius Groning. Or no, Lewis. Mitchell Lewis Groning. Yeah, whichever. It's all right. Um, so the terrain in front of me on the sandy path, if I'm going to ping the map here. Is that, like, can I get to there without it being? Yes. Okay. So Mitch is going to move up to the edge of the difficult terrain there mm-hmm. and then he is going to explosive leap what what 30 feet oh my gosh to be in front of between the shambler and the king oh my god okay so take me through explosive leap yeah so I was trying, there's there's some language in there that i definitely could use some second opinions on here um you aim an explosion from your innovation downward to launch yourself into the air you jump up to 30 feet in any direction without touching the ground I'm assuming that nullifies yes. um, the terrain. Yes. <laughs> you must land in a space of solid ground or else you fall after using your next action. As normal for effects where you fall after using your next action, you still fall at the end of your turn, even if you don't use any further actions that turn. So does that mean I fall regardless? Well, you're landing on solid ground, so, right. I, don't, so it's, okay. I don't think it's a qualification. Is yeah. there. Okay. I mean, it's difficult terrain, but, you, you know. Right. You're not landing on nothing. Like, I could see yeah. if you're landing on the embankment that it's right. kind of shambling okay. up. That that would be problematic. Wow. So you just jump, you just leap 30 feet through the air down into the foliage. Yep. Are you telling me, I've noticed where you've put your token, so you are now face-to-face with the shambler. Is that what you're telling me? Yeah. Yeah, I'm kind of in between it and wow. the range. That, folks. you know what? Your point. Oh, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
free zero check. That was right. that was that was pretty. I, did you? Do, I mean, I gotta think Kurtala's sitting there and just watches Vishal like in his Iron Man suit, just literally leap over his head, and he's just like, "That's awesome," and. Yeah. yeah, just watches him land. Like, yeah, we're going to kick this thing's ass. That's the coolest thing I've ever I seen exactly, that piece of shit yeah. do. It, 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 to me, it's like live, die, repeat, you know, in those mech suits they wear, and they kind of have that, that kind of jump they can do, that, yeah. that increased mobility. Like, I feel like it's like that, you know. And he well, just, that is unstable action, so I need to roll, see if I can do anything else. Okay. Unstable. Um, and that, I fail it, but I don't critically fail, so I just can't the rest of this combat. I can't do my uh, Megaton Strike or Explode at all. Gotcha. Which, okay. Thankfully. Okay. But hey, I mean, mean, my gosh, you just saved yourself a ton of action. I mean, what a good move! You know yeah. what, Brad? Nice job. That was great. Well, I've got that was awesome. One action left, and I'm going to swing at this thing. Heck okay, yeah. okay, with this flaming sword. No, I have got the, the my standard Roka sword. Oh, okay, now, okay. that's what's kitted out with my gear. Gotcha. Okay, that is going to be a it's a 17 on the die plus 12. It's a 29. Hit. Yeah. Sweet. 2d8 plus 4. Get God, the feeling AC isn't this thing's strong suit. That is f- 15 damage. Okay. You lop off one of its weird little tentacles. And you do 15 damage to this thing. Nice job. Slice it up. Okay. It is its turn. I don't like that. Yes. And so you... so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so you watch as it was like shambling its way towards Sirio, right? And you're just like, no. And you, you put yourself in between it and Sirio. It was very brave what you just did. Very brave indeed. And all of a sudden it just starts seeming like, I mean, it's a great idea. And it's a great idea on paper. And it's like, great. Right. But this now thing. Now I'm in front of this. It, fucking now you're in front giant. of it, right? And it, it just comes down with this vine lash against you. Uh, I'm gonna. I'm just gonna roll this thing. Ooh, yeah. Um, that's a 32. <laughs> Whoa. Whoa. Really? Yeah. Not like a 31. You it's, sure? It's a 32. Oh my god. It's a crit. Oh. Okay. Oh. Okay. Well. Uh, okay. I'm just gonna do a little. I'm just gonna do a little bit of damage. Whoa. Low roll so far. Wow. Okay. 29 damage. That's a oh, low roll? 29 damage, shit. yeah. It, I ended up rolling 4d8, and two of those were ones. Oh, God. Uh, oh, my God. So he just he really just hits you hard, man. You just ra- you, your teeth rattle inside your helmet, mm-hmm. right? Second action, auto grab. Oh. You are grabbed. You're now wrapped in the tentacles. Bad condition. Grab this fucker's going to try to swallow me. Oh, yeah. I wish. I was reading this dad <laughs> oh, book. No. I was going, oh, <laughs> man. Is there an engulf? There's not an engulf. But this next tentacle comes toward you. Ooh, I like that roll. I'm going to write down the result. Let's resolve this damage next time. God damn it. Pretty sure I've hit you. Pretty sure I've hit you. Mike, just a little clarification, but uh, greater health elixir is four hundred gold piece potion. Oh, you want to just give? Us I that thought it was just the three d six plus six. <laughs> no, I, I said greater. Oh, well, no, you don't find you find less. Brad, because <laughs> <laughs> I was not going to use those. I was going to. I appreciate your honesty. <laughs> lesser, yes.